Well, welcome to the Betfred Boxing Show with myself, Don McGuinness, and Anthony Million Dollar Crawler. As ever, we look at the action we've just witnessed and then we look ahead to what's coming up this weekend and beyond and some of the stories surrounding it. But Anthony, we're going to start with yep. Matchroom's final card on Sky, which yes. involved Lewis Ritson back in Newcastle, back with a, a decent crowd there as well, and again, a fight that he had to get over yeah, the line in uh, against Jeremias Ponce. It didn't quite work out again for Lewis, and it was a, a bad night for him and a controversial yeah. one as well. I, um, you know, I felt massive for Lewis. Great lad, his team, his father. You know, they're a great team, good bunch of people. But yeah, it was a tough night for him, and I think it become and early on, it wasn't going to be his night. Um, it's just at that time now, it's hard, like, with Lewis. And I'm not one of them, like, oh, where does he go from here? Does he have to retire? But he's going to be tough. He's obviously mm. going to have to drop back down a level um, and look to rebuild. But, I mean, he's young enough to do that, for sure, and fresh enough to do that. I just, listen, I think we're going to get on to Steve Gray, um, you know, with the stoppage. Mm. It's hard, you know. I actually felt for Steve Gray, and I know he's a great referee. And when he threw the towel out, I've not seen it, but I think he goes to explain. There's a clip in the match room where he goes in to explain to Lewis's team yeah, yeah. why he threw the towel out. I've not seen it. However, Lewis landed a good shot off the ropes. Um, I think it was a left hook. So I think he thought, do you know what? I'll give him every chance he can. But then what it was, the only disappointing thing for me was... He landed that shot, it didn't really have an effect. Lewis went down again. Mm. He was then beat the count and allowed, and I just thought that's where it should have been called. Yeah. But I don't listen, I don't want to start criticising referees. I know that sounds like what I'm doing. Steve Gray's a great, great referee. He, did he get that wrong? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I'll have to see his explanation when um, I'm sure it got put out by yeah. a match room. But um, listen, credit to the opponent. He, he come and he, was, um, he just wouldn't be denied. Yeah, well, I think Lewis Ritson himself has said Steve Gray was right. Yeah. Because in the, the thinking behind Steve Gray's decision, and it, as he explained afterwards to the team, was that yes. it was a body shot yes. that had done the damage. And he felt and that... And that makes a bit of sense, yeah. yeah. He, he felt that he, could, he, he wasn't out the fight just yet. He, he was giving him every yes. chance. Also, and there was a precedent set with this. Everyone talks about Mickey Van a few years Course, ago with, with Michael Katsidis and Graham, Graham Earl. Earl. He yeah. threw the towel out. For this one... And again, and this is where the board are probably going to look at it because of the, the rules. Because Steve Gray is well within his rights yeah, not to stop the fight, yeah. as we know. Uh, but And because of the reasons about potential fixing of fights. Yes. And, if, and also in the past, there have been incidents, I'm not saying in the UK, where a white T-shirt has come in and caused confusion or a towel from someone yes. else. And it's, it's yeah. the round they want, you know, someone might want that fight stopped yes. in that round. So it, it's not as... It's not as easy as it first looks to say, whoa, what's the referee doing? Yeah. That, you know, you've got to stop the fight. So no, there's lots totally. of reasons in and around it. And as you yeah, say, Steve Gray is very good. He's he knows a very exactly good what he's referee. Doing. I think, like I say, I watched, you know, his explanation. Do, do I think it should have been stopped after the, the second knockdown? Yes. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't, uh, thankfully, like Lewis was. Mm. Okay. But um, I think, it's, and it's just, you know, gutted for him. This point, yeah. like, he had a great crowd. That crowd, that, uh, I say at the time, that... Uh, Geordie crowd, the Newcastle crowd, they sound, it sounded like there was 10,000 in yeah. there, never mind a thousand. They really got behind him. And he played a big part in bringing boxing back to the North East. And I think everyone should be forever thankful for that. Listen, I'm not writing him off. I'm not saying he can't come back because he can. Uh, but it'll take a little bit of rebuilding. The thing with Lewis Ritson as well, he kind of almost put a bit of unfair pressure on himself because he did unbelievably well when he batted everybody on the he way to the lightweight the, scene, yeah. the lightweight British one, title one of the men that yeah. you know like yes. Scott Cardle Joe Scott Murray Cardle, Joe Murray quality operators it was Highland as well wasn't yeah. it Robbie Barrett he won yeah. the title off on when I, on the Ricky Burns when I boxed him on that yeah. undercard he he burst onto the scene the Jordi Golovkin um, yeah. he got named as and he did look every bit that and it just I think the weight caught up with him uh, when he fought Pantera, that was a big part of it. Although we fought a brilliant fight that night, I think that caught with him. And it, it's just, obviously, he's not been playing sailing since with the controversy of the Vasquez fight. Yeah. And I think now listen, it's just, I think, a little break and mm. just goes away now and look about what he's, what he's going to do different. Unless he tries to reinvent himself back at lightweight or, you know, he's been very I, honest about everything yeah, himself anyway. He, he was honest about the Vasquez honest lad, yeah. fight. He, you know, he felt, that felt like a defeat because of all yeah. the stick he got. Very honest lad and, and I think, I, I'm surprised when that's like, he's a big lad. Yeah. Um, if I don't mind, was sparring with him, you know, a few weeks before that fight, he, he would really struggle that lightweight. I don't think that's it. I think, 
and I always just look to change a few things. I don't mean like say he's he's got a great mm. team around him that'll make the best decision for him along with himself. Yeah, some other decent fights, obviously. April Hunt is another jury yes. with a following. April and... character, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Aaron and Joe Laws, I think they're like best mates, but you can yeah. see they're just so similar. Uh, very characters. Um, Thomas Patrick Ward, yeah. he was back out. He boxed very nice, good to see him. Yeah. But when in, um, I think he says he's going to drop back down to super band. And that's, that's my only worry. I just don't know how tight he is at the way, but he's got lovely skills. And um, the, the debut of Cyrus Moan, I like mm. him a lot. That was a great debut. Good card, good card. Yeah. You know? uh, well, and also there was. Uh... The Babich, the Savage. Oh, Babich. Yeah, against I didn't Damien forget. Chambers. And it was Damien a very Chambers good stoppage from Babich's was, point of view. Yeah, it was um, It was exciting while it lasts. Yeah. I remember like saying, so if you're like, listen, get watched, this will be exciting mm. while it lasts, whichever way it goes. Um, Damien come back. I think he just, the extra firepower landed with, um, it belonged to Babich, mm. didn't it? And it took over. It was, it was a great left up to finish it. He had Damien in trouble a few times. He had success. He had success, but... It was a uh, stoppage was perfect and yeah. like you say, Damien, he gave it a go. He had nothing to lose, but uh, fair play, Babich. The Babich uh, chain mm. rolls on, and he's just he's exciting. And he's another mm. character. I saw him this week at the uh, the fight camp announcement. Yeah, how he doesn't like his old. He wants someone to take it. <laughs> so he's going to be in some exciting fights for sure. That was a beautiful link into fight camp because that's what yes. we want to talk about next. Now, those first three fights with Matchroom and Dizone. Now that that that. Yep. new scene has been settled now by Eddie Hearn. Now, again, the, the three fights, that, the three main events that he's announced, I mean, there's Ben, Granados, Galahad Dickens finally, and then Boatsy, yes. Balotniks, which sounds like a really Brilliant. interesting one yes. for Boatsy. But firstly, you know, with Ben and, and Granados, and I think McCarthy and Bill and Smith on the undercard of that, and yeah, Matt Trim in the garden, fight. now with, yeah. a, with a few, you know, people, obviously there's going to be a few people mm. there in the garden as well, and it's a great looking card. It's going to be, a, forget this weather, it's going to be a great garden party, isn't it? But um, there it is. Obviously, we see the likes of, um, on the undercard, some of the prospects, your Campbell mm. Hattons, your Conor Ben. Mm. Um, he's, is he's he still a prospect, at, Conor Ben? Listen, I think the talk of him and some of the talk after the last fight about, I know Johnny Nelson mentioned about putting him in, you know, with Porter mm. and uh, fighters like that. I think, do you know what, I think this is the right fight at the right time for him. I still think he needs a few learning fights before stepping onto the world stage. Um, be interesting, interesting to see now how he deals with Granados going forward, but he's got massive aspirations to be a world champion, to be in with those names. We'll see. Mm. He, he's quite an enigma, isn't he? I know he was at a recent fight that we were both at in uh, the Chisora Parker fight, yes. and he was kind of in the, in the bubble afterwards Loves and all the boxing. rest of it. Yeah. He, he's, he's very kind of... He's a lot, of, you know, and we, we've obviously had dealings yeah. with him and everything else. And, but the, the public persona sometimes is the angry young man, but he's just so, not like no, that at he's all. Not. He's, he's not. a really affable. I think when the fella, camera's on him, he's just very, very yeah. sort of intense. But he is, he's such likable, talkative. Yeah. And uh, but he, he loves boxing. Yeah. He loves boxing and you know, lives a life. He's meant to be one of the hardest workers in the room. Yeah. And he's, I think one thing about him, similar to his old man, he always guaranteed excitement. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going to get again on the, the first week of fight camp. Yeah, McCarthy against Bill and Smith, that's an interesting trade one. Trade fight, well, real trade yeah. fight. I think uh, Bill and Smith's improved massively, as has McCarthy. Um, fighting for a European title, I think mm. I say this a lot. You win that European title, you've got a great ranking. You're a fighter too, or sometimes you'll get a volunteer shot, but be a fighter two away from putting yourself in the manager position yeah. for, for a world title shot. Well, the second week of that fight camp series, yes. if that's the right thing to call it, is Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens finally. You now, they what were meant to be fight. fighting, obviously, yes. a long time ago. And finally, now, they've got a date to look forward to. And, and you know, it's been frustrating for both of them. Yeah. Now, from we'll talk Kid Galahad in a minute. And we're going to hear from Kid Galahad in the run-up to the fight. But, yeah. but a little bit earlier, myself and Anthony, we caught up with... The team that is, Derry Matthews, George Vaughan, of course, is the lead trainer, but Derry was in the gym just a little earlier with Jazza Dickens. We know what we're doing now because we can work our programme. We, we, we've, we've had to like, train at 60%. Sometimes, you know, it's not going to be till this day, take a rest. Derry says, you just go home with your family. It's nice to spend time with your family, but when you know there's a wealth like, on your eyes, it's like you, you want get, to get to work. You, you, you're eager to do it, so... We know where we're at now and we can train properly. Yeah. And from your point of view, Derry, I mean, again, you, you know, as a former fighter, you know what it's all about with fights and falling through and being postponed and everything else. But 
you've got to try and work with George with you know about the plan for this fella as well. So it's annoying. It's just as annoying for you, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at the position where I've, I've been through the same thing as a fighter. Um, but obviously, jazz is the most important part of it. And but it's about being being right up here. Where he's right up here. He's more mentally strong than anyone I've ever seen in this world. Um, he, you know, we know when we can put step on the gas, when to step off it. Um, he does what he, what he's asked of of myself and George. But we're in a good place. We're in a good position. Um, it's a fight that was being getting geared up for the since since the last fight. Really, it's a fight Jazz has always wanted to take part in. Um, Again, we're just we're just lucky to be here, and thanks to everyone for making it happen. And we're lucky enough that we're getting it in Britain as well. It's a fight you've always wanted, Jazza. I mean, we know what happened first time. He took your row, if you like, back then. When it's a long time ago now, though, isn't it? I mean, what's changed from your point of view since then? Which is a bit of a mad question because I suppose everything can change in seven or eight years. Yeah, he took me out, my pride, my ego, <laughs> my next title shot. <laughs> he took a lot, but well, yeah, he, he deserves it. He was the better man on the night, and it is what it is. Um, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned more than if it went to distance and it was one on points. I, I learned more by losing. So uh, if you if you look back and say, what would you rather? Would you rather learn or would you rather? Go ahead, but not know what now what you know. It's it's a sicky one, isn't it? So yeah, that's a rather one. <laughs> but <laughs> so no, but I think I do believe God works in in His own way, and I'm happy to accept it. It weren't the only fights I lost. I lost two more after that. Um, so yeah, I've learned a lot along the way. What do you think is different about him? To be honest, I'm, I I haven't I haven't been watching him. All, all we, we um, all I know of him is we sparred a lot. I know I'm getting better. Um, I've got a different team. Jerry and Georgie um, taught me a lot. I'm getting better as it's going on. You know what I mean? I, I can tell you, he boxes the angle way, and that's the angle's way. I think yeah. the, all the fighters box the same. Um, he's obviously learning up. He'll be, he'll be picking things up, Moni. They have the same style, but he'll implement them in a way that he's learned to do it better along the way. Do you echo that, Derry, in terms of, you know, you, you watch him at close quarters and, you know, you, you're seeing improvements, you, you're you working on things. And, and and from also the point of view with Kid, I mean, Kid Galahad, what, what have you seen, if anything, different from him and also different from Jazza? Well, I mean, obviously, Galahad's a very good fighter, a, a, very, a very, very good fighter, a world-class fighter for me. Um, but as Jazza just said to them, he boxes the angle weight. Can he improve that? Um, we'll have to wait and see. But we know Jazz has changed certain things since he's come to us. He's he more mature. He's gone older, but he's, he's like a fine wine. The older he gets, the better he gets. He listens. He, he does what, what he's told. And but look, I'm not I'm not here to, to bad mouth anyone, but I just know we're in, we're in a good place. We're in a great position. And I know that he wins the fight. Jazz wins the fight. And... Whatever it takes, we've got it. He's got it, I should say. Um, he's the one doing the work. And we know what every box will be tipped from our from our point of view. George, you'll have him spot on. And up there, he's more ready than anyone, anyone in the world. Yeah. Also as well, when this one, well, it seems like an age when this was initially announced, but then the last we heard you were going to be fighting on the Canelo undercard. It all seemed a bit rushed and that didn't happen, but that was going to be over in the States. Now you're going to be top of the bill in Eddie's garden, but it's not It's not just the garden, is it? And it's going to be some event and you're going to have fans in there as well. Has that worked out much better for you, Jazza, from your point of view? I think so, yeah. I, I do always believe so. everything happens for a purpose, like I said before, and there'll be other chances to fight in them situations. There'll be other chances to fight on Canelo undercards, but... I think this uh, match in garden, I was watching it last year, um, and will he ever be another chance? Who knows? If it goes successful, he will, yeah. But, um, yeah, I do think it's a, it's a special thing that I get to to fight here. And I'm very lucky, really, because my team have made it happen. So I have to thank MTK, the manager, Tony, Georgie, and Derry, and all my sponsors who... Um, shout out to Maverick Sports as well. You know, like a lot of, lot of people keeping me going. And the people who supported me from day one, my family and friends. 
I'm, they, they're just a part of it. Well, such a likeable pair, really, aren't they, Jazza and Derry? And Jazza, he just beams. He lights up a room, Jazza. He's that kind of personality, isn't he? Great character, unbelievable story. And um, listen, I like Galahad as well. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of people who are rooting for um, for Jazza just because of what a good guy he is. Yeah, as I say, we will catch up with Kid and, and Dominic yes, Kingle as well, sure. obviously, before the fight. But it's, it's just, it's gone on so long now and they know each other so well from years ago. Yes. Just adds a lot to it. And, and it's a life changer for both lads, isn't it? It is, and I think this time there's a lot of respect um, there in this build-up, without a doubt. Life changer, as the boys said then, about being known as a world champion yeah. forever. That, But that's, you're two of the most dedicated lads mm. in British boxing. Listen, you'll find in boxing, yeah. in um, Jazza and Kid Galahad. I think both have made huge improvements since the first fight, which was a fantastic fight. And I think this is the fight I'm looking forward to. This is my pick mm. of them. There's a few, but I think this is mm. the um, most people's pick of yeah, fight the, camp. Well, the final week is headlined by uh, a light looking heavyweight that has been this. spoken about for a long time, obviously, and a, and a powerful guy that you know very yes. well. Joshua Boatsy against Balotniks. And Balotniks, of course, he... Well, he was the victor in a fight, went yeah. wrong for you with yes. Ophi Burton uh, yes. not so long ago. Won the golden contract, knocked out big Stevie yeah. Ward, stopped the Mikel in uh, the final. Mm. Very, very strong, improving. He's not just strong, fit, smart, defensively good, doesn't take too much. That That is a fight I'm really looking forward to. Mm. But that's a very exciting. And I think he's lucky he brought Virgil Hunter in. I went to work with Virgil Hunter to tighten up his defence. I think that was... One of very few criticisms that people had of uh, Joshua Boatze, you know, in his last few fights. If, like he does with you know, the other fights he works with, Virgil Hunter, he tightens up the defence mm. of Joshua Boatze. That's the lad who's going to take some stopping. He's a great character, Boatze, as well, isn't he? He's Lovely not one he's ever going to stomp his feet and no. shout and scream. But lets his fight and do the talking. But just, a, yeah, a really pleasant character last time again. out, you know, he knocked his opponent out. It was a vicious knockout and it was almost like... Before he hit the floor, he was worried for him. Do you mm. know what I mean? Um, he's just a um, guy. Does I think does a lot for his local church and stuff like yeah. that. Good guy and uh, can really fight. And Natasha will be on that bill. Yes. Natasha Jonas, of course, part of the stable that you're involved she, with in Bolton. Yes, she's back. Um, she's in the gym today. She was at the uh, the barbecue the other day. Me and Joe asking her, you know, just by looking at her, just how how much she enjoyed it and so like, <laughs> But no, she listen. Natasha's back, and I think obviously she gets a win that night. I'm not saying it's as straightforward as that. She gets that world title shot, whether it be a Katie Taylor rematch or a world title shot um, against someone else, which we think she deserves um, next after that. Is that pretty much set then, you think? There will be a world title that she gets through I this text? That, yeah, that, yeah. I, I mean, at, obviously, Katie's an obvious one to, to try and make, isn't it? At what weight? Um, I'm not too sure. And she always says, Tash, anyone between 130 yeah, and 140, yeah. I'll fight uh, for a world title. I'd love to. Anyone... Mm. Uh, I know we'll probably pick up on that later. The um, the boxing super series yeah. that's coming back at one foot, so super featherweight mm. for the women. Um, we'll see, we'll yeah. see. And Savannah Marshall as well. Savannah Marshall, it's always great seeing Savannah. Yeah. Obviously, we've had her on the show a few times, but uh, lovely skills, lovely yeah. skills. We were talking about the Clarissa, Clarissa Shield fight, wasn't it, last week? She had a successful. She might have um, to go to MMA to fight for yeah. her, so she might have to. Successful, I don't know how um, she's going to do it, yeah. Debuting that. And listen, fair play, you know what? Fair play to Clarissa Shields. It wasn't her all her own way mm. in that, but she got the win. Um, still, it's one of the biggest fights that we can possibly see in the women's game. Yeah. Now, of course, there is uh, another player in town, Fight Zone. It's the sixth weekend that Fight Zone have put a card on. Yes. Uh, and I know you've been to a few, Anthony. You've had fighters there and you've yes. been working as a pundit there. Yep. And, the weather's been amazing the last few weeks as well. <laughs> Not so much when you were there the first yes. week, but again, it's it, it's grown and grown and grown, hasn't it? Each week it's gone it's, on. It's, it's great for British boxing. I say it all the time, but there's a lot of lads and girls who wouldn't have got the opportunity to be performing, you know, because of the current pandemic, what's gone on. Mm. They would have been out of the ring and it's, it's probably kept so many of them in the sport. It's given that focus. There's been some great fights. since The fight last week, the main event was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. One of the best fights I've seen live. I don't just mean in recent mm. years, but I can remember. It was a brilliant fight between the lads. Um, yeah. It was Matt Wendell and Wendell Neil McCubbin. And Cubbin. It, was a, it was excellent, oh, wasn't it? Two great lads, and what a fight. But yeah, there's every, nearly every week we've shot a few great fights. The fight before that was a good fight. Tyler Denny beating um, Derek Asaza. Yeah. But that just got overshadowed because just of how good the little men was. Mm. I think every week there's been a great fight, and Tommy Frank gets his chance at revenge. Mm. 
uh, from the fight in the car park um, yeah, yeah. in December. It's it's a great thing they're creating there, and I think the atmosphere we see there's a great atmosphere. I think the weather certainly helps, but I'm looking forward again to this week. As you say, there were light flyweights in in uh, Wendell and McCubbin. McCubbin and it's, yeah. it's not really a fashionable weight division to no, put it mildly. I, just, I mean, there isn't even a belt there for these guys anymore. No, the, the Commonwealth belt, but. No. It just shows you they should not ever be overlooked. Not because at all. Those it guys, was, it was, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable back and forward. And then I mm. thought, I'm going to come and turn this around. And then, you know, when they'll come back. It was just, just a brilliant fight, yeah. ups and downs. And I'm glad they got sort of the platform that they deserved. Yeah. And hopefully now when you see, I say it all the time, like, so skilled, some of these yeah. smaller fighters. They just don't get the credit they deserve because they don't, you don't always see the knockouts that uh, people like to see. Well... A smaller division is going to be topping the bill again this yes. Friday, and it Good. is the return of Super Tommy Frank. Mm -hmm. He's going to try and get revenge against the guy that took his O in terms of uh, Rosendo Hugo Graneros, who came yeah. to the freezing car park in December, and Tommy's injury let yes. him down. But of course, myself and Anthony, we caught up with Tommy just to find out how he's feeling now, just ahead of the fight. Super Tommy Frank back in action, and everything done, all the tests have been done, Tommy. So, uh well, we can look forward to you doing battle again with Graneros, which was a good fight in the car park in the middle of winter, but it didn't, it didn't go your way for reasons we know, but everything's fully healed. How are you feeling ahead of it? Just excited, mate. You know, here we are in, in the bubble. Everyone's COVID-free, which is good. So just killing killing time to, to weigh in tomorrow now, you know, and that, that's when that's when fun begins. But no, we're, we're raring to go down. We are. And Tommy? Obviously, the unfortunate going, circumstances. Right. I'm good, Tommy. Good to uh, good to be speaking to you, Tommy. Obviously, you know matters that was sort of out of your hand really last time. How confident was you that you was going to get the rematch? And obviously, you know Dennis has delivered for you. And what does it mean, sort of having it now in front of a, a bigger audience for you? Um, to to be honest with you, Ant, I mean, I was told that you know I think I think there were actually a, a rematch clause in in the in the contract right. which which were, which were handy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, con considering what what happened, obviously that's that's kind of what what them things are for. So um, you know, straight away, I I, I, I were devastated. Obviously, you know, it were my first uh, my first loss, and uh, you know, I've had to. Um, it's it's been an odd six six or seven months. It's not all been been straightforward, you know. I had to recover from from that injury, what I uh, sustained that night. But um, it's just made me better than ever. It's made me stronger than ever. It's not not only made me a better fighter, but just just a better person in general. I think you know. I think um, you know boxing as in as in life. You know, you have ups and downs, and you have a to lot rebuild. Of and, building. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we are a doubt. Mental and, strength um, and. Yeah, hundred percent, you know, and I think I mean, I mean, I, I know hundred percent, and I think I'm I'm known for being very very dedicated to to the sport, but even even more so this last six seven months, you know, especially like January February, I were having to go into yeah. gym an extra hour early to warm up, do my session, yeah. and then stay in an, an extra hour after to do all my rehab and stuff. So it's just made me even more even more disciplined, dedicated, and. And just yeah, just 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 a better fire. Tommy, will there be anything mental uh, that you have to worry about going in when you've had an injury? It's the same kind of question that everyone gets asked. I mean, obviously, someone that you know, like Kel Brought, when he did his eye, and Daniel Dubois recently had it with a similar injury. Your injury isn't that severe, if you like, but it's still something that could play on an athlete's mind when your arm has gone or your shoulder went in that fight. Or are you super confident, as you super Tommy, that that can't happen again? Yeah, I think it's um, I, you know, it, it's been it's been hard because I've I've never been injured before uh, as as a professional or an amateur, so I, I was very lucky in, in that respect. You know, as as Anthony, I'm telling you, you know, you, you always pick up little niggles during training and, and stuff like that. But there's a difference between that and then actually getting a, an injury. What what well what what let me down in in the actual fight and what what put me out on on the sidelines for for a while. So um, you know, it's been it, it has been hard mentally, and you know. I think especially early doors, like I said, January, February, when I were, when I was doing my rehab stuff and getting back in the gym, maybe it did play play on my mind. But you know, a massive shout out to, to my physio, Lisa Bailey. Um, you know, I've worked with Lisa, you know, since since I turned pro, so for a good four or five years now. And you know, she's been working with me week in week out for the last six months, and uh, she she's just got it right, you know. So week week by week, it, it, we're getting stronger and stronger, and. 
like I said, I think one, once you've got it back and what well, one, once you you throw it again and there's nothing and and you're fully confident in it and obviously you, you're sparring, you know, rounds upon rounds with it, so so you know that it's right and um, you know what once you've got that confidence back in it, it's like I suppose it's like a footballer getting injured, you know, when when the first come back as soon as they have that that first big tackle and they're all right and they realise. I'm I'm not I'm not met, met a glass, you know what I mean. So and and then they're straight back on it. So I, I think it's probably similar. Um, but you know, like I said, I've been firing on on all cylinders for a while now. So um, on on good, mate, on, on good to go physically and and mentally. Tommy, do you know? Obviously, you have shared the ring with the opponent before, despite being cut short. This time round, I know you said you feel a much better fighter, a much better person, stronger person. Um, you know, especially mentally, you know, for it. Have you have you changed many things in camp, or have you kept it very similar? Have you kept the same sparring partners? Or have you thought have you seen, from the first fight you thought no, he done that well, so I'm going to bring someone in who does that a little bit like him? Or have you kept things more or less exactly the same? Um, you know, to to be honest, we are. Uh, I'm I'm very very lucky with spar with uh, lucky with, with sparring and stuff from at, at Sheffield Boxing Centre. We've got a wide range of guys to, to, to spar with. Yeah, a lot, a lot of in-house sparring, but yeah. I've been very, very lucky as well because I just, I just seem to to attract good, good sparring. You know, Matt, Matt yeah. Window, who, who had a track yes, fight like last Friday. Fight. Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, I, I were very lucky. You know, he came down a couple of weeks before before his fight. Uh, you know, and we got we got some good rounds in together. So I always seem seem to attract good sparring. You know, we, we had some some other lads come down. I uh, sparred, and you know, Keen Keenan Wayne, right? He's had some good sparring. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been very very lucky on on that part. But to be honest, we we've just been um, we've just been doing what what we always do, and I, you know, I just feel that if it's not broke, don't don't fix it. You know, just keep keep working day in day out. Um, you know, on 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 your craft, and I think when you do it like that, you just you, you naturally get better uh, over over time. You know, just work, working on on the little things. You know, your head movement, your your foot movement, just just everything. And I think I think it all just rolls rolls into one. Then you know, it's going to be a lively night on Friday, Tommy. As well, I mean, you've got your own fans. You you all you're well supported in Sheffield, and there's some other lads on the bill as well. We know that like the likes of Jake Andrew from Manchester is bringing plenty over as well. He's not even he's not fought as a pro yet, and he's got a massive fan base. It seems so. Again, there's some great storylines as well, and that seems to be the thing that's unfolding on these fight zone shows. We're getting great prospects making debuts, and and, and good people like taking the next step, and and the crowd. It's been incredible. I know you've been down a couple of times, so you must be dead excited, thinking I'm going to get a bit of that now. Yeah, I mean, it's just been like, like I've just been like lick, licking me, licking my lips every week. You know, I've I've been uh, I've been lucky enough to to gone to a couple of the shows, and you know, you you guys had me in in the studio and stuff, and mm. it's been absolutely booming on on everyone. And you know, I'm um, I, you know I'm expecting Friday to 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 be you know absolutely brilliant. You know, like like you said, there's a lot of fighters on the bill that that sell, you know sell a lot of tickets and. You know, I I know that I'll be bringing a lot, and and then you throw in England versus Scotland as well. You know, and like you said, there's going to be a few a few merry people uh, bouncing around that that car park. Uh, so it's just um, it's just it's just absolutely brilliant. You know, the, these shows they just seem to be attracting you know good good things. You know, good fighters, good fights. It's just brilliant to see fans back at, at live boxing. You know, obviously and enjoying themselves. And uh, long, long may it continue. Well, Tommy Frank, nice and relaxed. Can't wait to right the wrong, even though it wasn't really, was it? It was one of them things. An injury yeah. can happen and there's not a lot you can do. Listen, we don't know what would have happened, but, it, you know, he was unfortunate. He seems to be doing well before that and he seems in a great place there. And it's great that he, he didn't just mention about, you know, improvement as a boxer. He was like, as a person, mm. mentally stronger. And he seems in a great place there, as yeah. you can see. And one of the many flying the flag for Sheffield is, uh, what is it, Water? <laughs> In water, Sheffield water. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. In the water. Yeah, yeah, and listen, you know what? He'll bring a fair few there. Yeah, yeah. They've got um, a local lad, Jake Cummings Jumbo. He's on. Um, he's going to bring a few hundred. There'll be a great crowd. We've mm. mentioned the match. I think the boxing is going to stop for a few hours in between the football. Yeah. So we'll get to watch England Scotland. It's going to be some night, though. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, so the big news, I suppose, in the last week or two is in the world of domestic boxing, has been the matchroom in the sky parting of ways. And yes. Sky now, it, it opens up a new world for them. 
Uh, since we last met, the announcement of the top rank deal uh, has been formalised yeah. in terms of Sky will take the, the top rank fights overnight on Saturday nights, which means that the likes of Alomachenko will, will be yes. sticking with Sky, which well, that's great news, isn't it? I mean, for, for, firstly, that international deal, how important is that uh, for Sky? Oh, it's, it's massive because we get to see some of the stars of world boxing who, who wouldn't normally get to see. And it starts this week and we've just been talking about the little men, mm. Inoue. Yeah. Wow. Uh, one of the pound for pound, you know, some people have him number one, but certainly in the top three or five for yeah. sure. Explosive little man. He's fighting mm. this weekend, so hopefully there's going to be more views who get to see him. He's mentioned Lomachenko. He's mm. at the end of the month. It's great to see him on television again. Yeah. And um, is it, there's going to be, listen, there's going to be some huge, some of the biggest names in, in world mm. boxing on yeah. Sky now. And what's been really interesting, of course, is the uh, emergence. I mean, uh, we both know, have met him and know yeah. him, but uh, Ben Shalom will not be a familiar yes. name to many, but he was, he was one of no. the, the guys behind the Ultimate Boxer, which turned into Boxer, and yeah. now he's going to be very much involved a big with player in it. Sky yeah, Boxing, was, with, um, with Johnny Wishusen as with well. With John Wish, who's you know, respected massively uh, around British boxing and well on the world scene as well. He uh, really knows his stuff, so Ben's got mm. a great guy. You know, alongside him, but yeah, you know, fair play to Ben, um, local lad who, mm. you know, he worked hard with those shows and some of the boxer shows, the entertainment on them yeah. was unbelievable. Some of those boxer tournaments, I think, listen, obviously very similar format to the prize fight. Uh, you used to get a lot of guns then, but um, he got it right nearly every time with them. Yeah, well, uh, it will be interesting to see how much kind of entertainment, if you like, comes yes, into the well. sky world yeah, now. As, yeah. Or whether it's just going to be focusing True, well, on, on the... That's going to be the interesting thing. Like, obviously, we saw Sky now showing a few YouTube fights and so like, If we're going to... I don't mean we're going to be showing YouTube fights, but if we're going to see the show... You've seen it a little bit with the thriller. Do you yeah. know, it's become a bit more of a show and entertainment, yeah. night of entertainment, rather than just the boxing. I'm not sure. Um, mm. We'll see. And speaking of Trilla, shame about Lopez and COVID and the yeah. Cambosis fight off um, now. You know, massively you feel, listen, you feel for both fighters, I don't say Cambosis, yeah. but also Lopez. Um, his big night and Cambosis, who's well documented, the uh, purse bid that was put in by Trilla. Mm. It's, you know, it's, it's disappointing when any fight falls through. But never mind someone who's been away from home for 12, 13 weeks. I think I saw him putting yeah. a statement that, you know, he flew his pregnant misses over with him so he could be beside it. And that messes a lot of things up now. But, they said they're going to re reschedule it for August, so all's not lost. It's just a frustrating. Unfortunately, it's just a part of boxing. Big mm. fights do fall through due to injuries and illnesses. And first of all, let's just, you know, thoughts to your female Lopez. Hopefully, mm. you know, yeah. he recovers 100%. You mentioned uh, a little while ago on this about the World Boxing Super Series. You just hinted at it yes. because uh, it is back. Back for the Which, women. Yeah. And it's nice to see them getting that platform. You know, me, me and you have been there at some of the big nights. Yeah. In um, the World Boxing Super Series, uh, the Callum Smith Callum in Saudi Smith. was uh, Saudi was one incredible event. In wasn't, um, yeah. a cold Ambal Arena in Germany was yeah, another. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously in Manchester, yeah, yeah. Um, Grove, Eubank Junior. Wow, yeah. but yeah, it was. Um, it's for listen, it's threw up some great fights, threw up some unbelievable fights, and I think it's great that the women are getting that platform in the Super Featherweight division. Mm. So I'm guessing. Our own Terry Harper, I hope, and she's going to be involved. Girl, we just mentioned earlier, Tasha Jonas. Could be. She, she's always said anyone between 130, 140. There's some great fights to be made there. Yeah. Is it um, Killer Mayo? Well, I, as well I think as, as well, one? given the quality of the, oh, the, the women's fights that we've seen, particularly you know since COVID has been around, you know some of the matchups that we've seen have been in, involving this Tasha, obviously, yes. for two particular fights with yeah. Harper and Katie Taylor. It, it probably is a, the ex a brilliant showcase for the quality women's fight. Now, that round, round robin kind of quick fire tournament yeah. feel to it would get a lot of eyeballs on it. Of course it would. I think we've we've said it before. I think the thing that's benefited the most from the pandemic has been the women's side of yeah. the game because they've just delivered massively. Mm. And now everyone wants it. Just gets treated no different by most people now. When a woman, two women are in the ring, ready to fight, it just gets treated mm. as boxing, which is how yeah. it should be. They delivered massively, so. Like I say, I'm, I'm glad we're going to get to see the first. I think it's a great tournament. Yeah. We both do, don't we? We've seen some great fights in it. And it'll be interesting, and hopefully we can have another uh, UK mm. winner. Yep. Yeah. Right, well, finally, what's the world of Crawler hold for world you for the, the next week before we see you here again? OK. Um, and a bit of good news about the gym today. I don't think they're going to knock the building down. So this was 
concerning the fire yes, at Fox the fire, ABC. So, so it looks like a clean up and maybe a revamp and you might be back in business. A big roof and um, yeah. a, a rewire. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, that, that's good. So it'll be quicker, yeah. sooner rather than later. Um, in the gym with Joe, Paul Butler and Jose Burton, both in fights a week next week yeah. with um, world title eliminators and British title final eliminators, both final eliminators. Paul Butler fights Joseph Agebko, which mm. is an easy fight. Jose Burton, Liam Conroy, I don't yeah. think that can help, but be a bad fight. What else? Um, other than that, you mentioned Sash. Sheffield, Rhiannon, you know we're waiting. Zone? Yes, Rhiannon, well, for them, one of the fight camps. Fight Zone, Friday, yeah. with yourself, uh, Big Glenn, and the rest of the team. Yeah. Dave Allen. Big Dave Allen, yeah. always entertaining. Yeah, yeah. roving reporter Dave Allen. Yeah, good, good guy. Yeah, so that's obviously we've got that Friday. Watch Tommy Frank, Super Tommy yeah. Frank, and look forward to it. Predictions for the football? I think it's. Um, I thought England looked well the other day. I thought England looked well the other day, and um, it was always going to be a big ask for Scotland, but I think um, England win. Two or three nil, yeah, two or three nil. I'd be confident. I'd be yeah. very surprised if they drop points on Friday. Listen, it's always tasty against Scotland, and I'm really looking forward to it. And big Scott McTominay fan, and listen, hope it does well. But I think England win on, on um, Friday. Well, that's Crawler's punt. You know what to do if you've got a punt. It's bet Fred. Three nil. It's all the uh, yes. Euros going on. Of course, that's got everything else going on. It's bet Fred. But this has been the Boxing Show. This is Betfred Boxing. We'll see you next week.